So, you've been told that you have a fatty liver. What does this mean? Today, approximately 25% of the world's population has a fatty liver. Most people are not even aware of it. So how does fat infiltration cause liver cells to die? Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley, and today I'm going to talk about how obesity can lead to fatty liver disease, and in some people, cirrhosis and liver failure. The liver is a highly complex organ in your right upper abdomen, just beneath the rib cage. It's a metabolic workhorse processing and detoxifying chemicals in your body. If your liver stopped working all of a sudden, you could only survive for a day or two without treatment. So how does fat infiltrate the liver and cause disease? Let us uh, take the example of a mouse. Research has shown that if you take human liver cells, transplant them, these cells, into a mouse, and then feed the mouse a Western diet high in sugar and fat for two weeks, the human liver cells inside the mouse develop fatty liver disease in two weeks. A real life example is foie gras, which is popular in French cuisine. This is the fatty liver of a goose, which has been force fed a high calorie diet for about two weeks. The body stores excess energy as fat. Normally, it is stored as triglycerides in the adipose tissue. Once the amount of fat in the body has exceeded the storage capacity of the adipose tissue, the triglycerides, which is the storage form of fat, are broken down into free fatty acids which then travel through the bloodstream to the liver. The extra fatty acids are once again packaged into triglycerides and stored inside lipid droplets inside the liver cells or hepatocytes. Your liver is not supposed to store fat and eventually the fat overload in the liver causes dysfunction. When at least 5% of liver cells are infiltrated with fat droplets, you have fatty liver disease. Where does the fat in the liver come from? Most of it comes from the extra fat that can no longer be stored in the adipose tissue. About 25% of it is actually new fat that the liver creates from excess sugar in the diet in a process called de novo lipogenesis. Actually, the smallest proportion comes from fats that are ingested in food. This is in part because when fat is absorbed in the gastrointestinal tract, it is packaged inside chylomicrons, which are then distributed more widely to all the metabolically active tissues in the entire body. In contrast, sugars such as fructose are delivered directly to the liver from the GI tract via the portal vein. There, fructose forces your liver to create more fat you know, using de novo lipogenesis while using itself as a substrate. Fructose does not induce the same satiety signals as other carbohydrates such as glucose. So it's easier to eat more of it without feeling full. Fructose is commonly found in, in sweeteners such as sucrose and high fructose corn syrup. So how can the liver get rid of its fat cells? It can export fat cells in very low density lipoproteins or VLDL, which then travel 
to the rest of the body through the bloodstream. It can break down or oxidize fat in the mitochondria for energy. Finally, the liver can store fatty acids as relatively harmless and inert triglycerides, remember that's the storage form of fat, inside liver cells and those lipid droplets. Unfortunately, as fat builds up over time, it eventually impairs the function of the liver. Mitochondria, the tiny power generators inside liver cells, become overloaded while trying to process all this fat to make energy. This causes inflammation and injury in the liver. Hepatocytes, or liver cells, are triggered to commit suicide or apoptosis, which then leads to more inflammation. When the liver senses that it's inflamed or damaged, it activates hepatic stellate cells. These are specialized cells in the liver that start producing collagen and other proteins which cause scarring of the liver over time. This process is similar to how a cut in the skin heals by scar formation. If too much of the functional liver tissue has been replaced by scar tissue, you have fibrosis of the liver. Fibrosis or scarring of the liver is categorized into five stages of increasing severity, from F0 to F4 being the worst. Once F4 fibrosis of the liver is developed, you have cirrhosis of the liver. At this point, most of the scar tissue that is formed in your injured liver is irreversible. It's very important to evaluate the amount of fibrosis or scarring in the liver because this is really the only factor that can tell us anything about the overall prognosis of the liver. Homo sapiens have not evolved to tolerate today's processed diet, which is high in sugar and fat. All this excess energy that we consume is stored as fat in the body, as this is really the most efficient way for the body to store calories. Once the amount of body fat exceeds the storage capacity of adipose tissue, it is deposited in the liver causing fatty liver disease. This is not a normal state for the liver, and the liver tries over and over again to repair itself by making scar tissue. Over time, if too many healthy liver cells are replaced by scar tissue, the liver no longer works very well. This can lead to cirrhosis and liver failure over time. Thank you for listening. I hope that this was helpful for you.